going to give you just a little, a few little tips for having a healthy sexual relationship. Always remember that good sex begins while your clothes are still on. Maybe in the morning as you care for one another and are very tender and kind to each other. And as they stay on, take time to think about yourself as a sexual being. We were created male and female. We are designed to be sexual in nature. And so that happens even after conception and the XY uh, thing happens and the ad androgen bath of the uh, fetus, uh, the cells as they begin to multiply and divide. And so we are sexual beings from the moment uh, that we are brought into this world. Talk with each other. Communication is the key to almost everything in marriage. So don't exclude sex from, from your conversation. Talk with your spouse, share what you like, what you need, what, what you appreciate that they do. Make time to be together with each other sexually. Don't just see if there's some time left over. It will rarely happen as busy a lives as we run. And so make time to be together. I had a counselor friend who said couples ought to have a regular time that they just kind of expect and look towards and look forward to. And that fits kind of the penguin personality we talked about, kind of like you like order and structure and planning. Um, and then it blesses also the person who is a little on the more spontaneous side when you then stay open to possibly when the idea strikes you on a non-planned or a non-expected time. Spontaneous. So spontaneous. So try to mix both, unless you both happen to be penguins in your relationship and you like structure and orderliness. Unless you're both that bent, allow for both dimensions of spontaneity and planning. All right, a little bit more advice. Okay, don't let sex become routine. Try and think of things occasionally to make it out of the ordinary, to make it special, whether by time, location. Planning or spontaneity, all right? Understand that working at sex doesn't work, okay? And so, I am a counselor and I don't give people homework assignments because how many of you, me, liked homework? Well, sex might be a little bit of an exception there, but I like to give people experiments. And so don't work at your sex life. Don't look at your performance or your spouse's performance. Play, nurture, love your sex life, and that will help it start spinning in a better direction if it needs to. Don't carry anger into your bedroom. Um, try and resolve arguments, disagreements. Try not to have those at bedtime. Plan, if, if you need to postpone an argument and say, you know, we're getting very tired and grumpy and cranky, let's postpone this discussion for another day and set a time. But don't, don't if you always go to bed angry, you're not going to feel very loving toward your spouse. Make your bedroom a place of sanctuary, love, and peace. And I know homes are small here, so you might have to uh, get creative. Um, you know, the multi-story uh, garages, you might need to go out to the car and sit in the car and have a discussion that might be of anger, nature. And guess what? You don't want to live in your car. You do enough of that in the traffic. And so maybe though, you know, if you just change something of the location, but try to make the bedroom not a place for arguments. Make it a place of love and tenderness, rest and peace and enjoyment, rather than a place where you carry anger. <laughs> yeah, you yeah. take this one. Yeah, re remember that good sex is not just a matter of pushing the right buttons. If I touch this, if I do this, if I say this, here's what we get. Remember That's not our, how it works. Remember our two boxes. A picture is worth a thousand words, ladies, gentlemen. All right, nurture the romance in your life. That's a good thing as you continue, guys, to be that lover to your wife that you were a number of years ago. You know, it's interesting that we guys might be sued for false advertising. We were really romantic in the early days when we were conquering the heart of our woman. And then once we conquered uh, that heart, we may say, well, you know, okay, now on to other things in my life, sports and work and kids and, you know, whatever. So remember to not just conquer, live out that advertisement that I am a good lover that you obviously were in your early days. And 
to your credit, I see a lot of people who are still doing a great job of that. Again, in the hallway, I saw signs of love and relationship here that someone would be saying, you're guilty of being lovingly married. I see you touching. I see you holding hands. I see you looking at one another in kind, endearing ways. So keep it up, folks. You're on the right track. Don't make too serious a deal of sex. Sex is something that you're in your child, ego state like we talked about earlier. So play uh, with that. Don't always wait to be in the mood before agreeing to have sex. You know, sometimes you do things out of uh, a sense of duty, of honor, that yes, this is what I should do. And once you've gone and done that, you know, you're usually really glad you did. And so be mindful of that. Don't always wait to be in the mood. Realize that you and your spouse don't have to see eye to eye sexually on everything. You know, there may be some things that you prefer that your spouse doesn't, and if it's not offensive, you know, then kind of plan the menu and sometimes do some things he likes and sometimes she likes. And hopefully you'll both develop a common ground of what you both really enjoy. And then do, as I said earlier, as we talked about, if you're having difficulty in your sex life, look to a role model couple that you feel close to that you can ask. Uh, or perhaps it is a counselor, or perhaps it is a medical doctor. For So don't feel afraid to ask for help. You know, we don't live perfect lives, emotionally, physically, sexually. So occasionally there may be a season in your life where you need uh, to, to have some help. And then also, try to keep your sexual expectations realistic. Do not let Hollywood rob you of real life and real intimacy because what they present in some of those chick flick movies is not real. You are real, and I see it, we see it, and we love what we see here. 